guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will just continue the discussion of IES 16 property plan and equipment subsequent to initial recognition. So let's start. Okay, so before we proceed to the actual discussion, let's discuss first revaluation model and fair value model. So normally, ang question dyan, magkaiba ba si revaluation model at fair value model? So, uh, or parehas lang naman sila. So in the standard, magkaiba po yan sila. Kasi fair value model is actually ay para lang yan po sa IS20 or investment property. So I think we already discussed what is investment property. These are land or uh, building or part of the building that is being leased out or rented out to others. So if that's the case, ang gagamitin po natin doon is fair value model. So ang revaluation model naman po, hindi po yan governed by IS20 but governed by IS16 which is property, plant and equipment together with the cost model. Ulitin po natin na ang fair value model, ang gagamitin standard doon ay investment property. Tapos naman, ang revaluation model, gagamitin natin standard yung IS-16, property, plant, and equipment. So another distinction is that if we use fair value model, since it is an investment property, so this will be the accounting treatments, di ba? So under fair value model, although kinukuha natin yung ating revalued amount or yung fair value ng property, ng property na under investment property, we do, we do not recognize any depreciation expense. So, lagi lang po natin siyang pinibinivalue kung ano yung value niya. So, whatever the difference is charged dun sa ating profit and loss. It's either gain or loss. Ulit, so sa fair value, hindi tayo nag-recognize ng depreciation. At the same time, whatever the change in fair value ay diretso sa profit and loss. However, under revaluation model, under property plan and equipment, if the property plan and equipment is subject to depreciation, so basically, we record the depreciation annually regardless kung may revaluation or wala. So kung kahit cost model ka or revaluation model, at the end of the day or at the end of every year, you still need to depreciate the property. However, under revaluation model, kapag meron po tayong revaluation, we have first to determine what is the result of the revaluation. Masaya ba yan or malungkot? Pag masaya, meron tayong upward evaluation. If that's the case, the, re the upward revaluation should be recorded under OCI or other comprehensive income. While kapag may downward evaluation naman, i-recognize naman po natin yan sa ating PNL under revaluation loss or kaya naman pwede natin gamitin yung impairment loss. So, ayan lang po yung difference. Evaluation model, PPE, fair, fair value model, investment property. So, yung accounting treatments nasa taas. So, Tingnan nyo lang po mabuti kasi ang focus po natin, natin ngayon ay revaluation model wherein we'll still need to recognize depreciation, depreciation expense. However, we have to uh, consider the revaluation afterwards. It's either upward or downward. So, okay, review ulit tayo ng revaluation model. So, makinig mabuti kasi marami nagkakamali dito. Okay, so under revaluation, so ang lagi natin tatandaan dyan, yung kapag may upward revaluation nilalagay sa OCI kapag may downward naman ilalagay natin sa PNL ulit kapag may upward OCI kapag may downward PNL so let's assume these figures so for example ng 2019 meron tayong property plan and equipment 500,000 then 2020 700 2021 400,000 so para malaman natin kung ano yung treatment so gawa natin siya ng timeline di ba for example 2019 nandoon siya sa first part Second part, 2020, and third part, we have 2021. So, sa case natin, no 2019, ang value natin is 500,000. So, kung mapapansin nyo, no 2020, yung value natin from 500 naging 700,000. If that's the case, kung mapapansin nyo, nag-increase. So, therefore, meron tayong upward revaluation. So, yung upward revaluation, i-recognize natin yan sa OCI. So, amounting to 200,000. So, ang record nyo lang naman dyan, for example, land to, so debit land and credit revaluation surplus reported under OCI. So, uh, next natin, pagdating ng 2021, ang nangyari po, nag, ano naman siya, nag-reduce siya sa 400,000. So, kung mapapansin nyo, ang initial value 500, tumaas ng 700, tapos bumaba ulit ng 400,000. So, dahil revaluation model po tayo, so the downward revaluation should be reported under PNL. However, di po natin yan pwedeng i-recognize diretso sa PNL kasi may na-record na tayo initially under OCI, di ba? So, yung OCI natin, so, from 700 naging 400, sa so total 
downward revaluation is 300,000. So, ang treatment po natin sa 300,000, hindi po yan recorded lahat under TNL. So, ang gagawin natin, dahil may na-recognize tayo ng 2020 ng the upward revaluation of 200,000, so, tanggalin muna natin siya sa libro. So, tatanggalin natin yung 200 ng under OCI, then magre-recognize tayo ng PNL na 100,000. So, ganyan po yung concept niya na kailangan yung tandaan ha. So, hindi pwedeng diretso. So, kailangan mo nang ubusin kung ano yung na-recognize mo dun sa OCI bago tayo pumunta sa PNL. Yung effect niyan, vice versa naman, pag ang, ang effect naman natin, from PNL naging OCI. So, bago pumunta sa OCI, i-recognize mo muna yung mga na-record natin sa PNL. So, tandaan nyo yan kasi ito yung gagamitin natin sa next discussion kasi same uh, concept, however, magkakaroon tayo ng pinatawag na depreciation. Okay, so what if the uh, property planning equipment are subject to depreciation? So, as we discussed earlier, so kapag ang property planning equipment is subject to depreciation, still, uh, kapag pinili natin yung revaluation model, we still need to depreciate every year. However, we still need to revaluate regardless of the results, either upward or downward. So, remember, mag-record pa rin tayo ng depreciation every year, then mag -re revalue tayo if needed. So, ito po yung approach na binigay sa atin ng standard. So, if we go to revaluation, tapos si property plan and equipment is subject to depreciation, so meron po tayong two approach na pwede natin gamitin. So, yung approach na to gagamitin natin to with regards to the accumulated depreciation. So, first, pwede daw po natin gamitin is yung proportional method. Another one, we can also use the elimination method. So, tandaan yung dalawang methods na to ginagamit lang po natin to sa pag-account ng accumulated depreciation. Kasi kapag pinili nyo po yung proportional method, The accumulated depreciation is retained. So meaning, uh, i-retain -re natin yung ating accumulated depreciation kahit meron na tayong bagong revalued amount. However, any adjustment must be made proportionate dun sa change ng fair value. So mamaya, pagbibigay tayo ng example kung paano yan gagawin. So another method, we have the elimination method. So same lang naman sila. However, during, during revaluation, so instead of retaining the accumulated depreciation, yung accumulated depreciation po ay ini-eliminate natin. So, accumulated depreciation is eliminated and a new account accumulated depreciation will be maintained. So, at the end of the day, parehas lang po yung result na yan. Ang pinagkaiba lang po nila is yung presentation. It's either proportional or elimination. Pero, mas magandang gamitin si proportional kasi nare-retain po natin yung mga value. Mas madali siyang matrace. However, yung elimination kasi madali siyang gawin. However, yung trail natin, hindi siya masyadong nakalatag ng maayos. Pero, at the end of the day, si yung company, meron naman siyang choice kung anong gusto niyang piliin. Proportional or elimination. For this round, ang i-discuss muna po natin ay yung proportional method. Okay, so let's have an example. What if the revaluation is uh, proportional method? So, under proportional method, the precision expense will be recorded. However, revaluation must also be considered. It's either upward or downward. So, let's have an example. For example, an equipment was acquired on January 1, 2016 at a cost of 1 million and was expected to have a useful life of 10 years with no residual value. In December 31, 2017, the appraised value is 960,000. So, basically, i-record muna natin yung transaction. Then, punta tayo mamaya sa December 31, 2017 para malaman natin kung ano yung dapat natin i-journal entry. So, at January 1, 2016, at the acquisition date, So, mag-debit lang tayo ng equipment, then credit tayo ng cash, 1 million. Kasi ayan yung kanyang price. So, pagdating mo ng December 31, 2016, normal lang naman. So, mag-recognize na tayo ng depreciation expense, then accumulated depreciation. Ang amount natin, 100,000 kasi cost na 1 million minus residual value which is 0 divided by the estimated useful life na 10 years. So, basically the annual depreciation is 100,000. Since January naman siya binili, so ibig sabihin, yung buong taon, i-record po natin yung full annual depreciation, which is 100,000 pesos. So pagdating ng 2017 daw, the appraised value is 960. So before we proceed to the revaluation, i-record muna natin yung related accumulated depreciation or yung ating depreciation expense. So pagdating ng 2017, record lang tayo ng, at December 31, depreciation, equipment, Then, accumulated depreciation equipment, 100,000. However, based on sa arrangement, the equipment daw will be appraised at 
to 960,000. So mas maganda gagamit po tayo ng table, di ba? So 2017 daw this will these are the information. So may cost tayo na 1 million, then the balance of the accumulated depreciation is 200,000 kasi 100,000 ang galing ng 2016, another 100,000 ang galing sa 2017. So yung net amount doon or yung carrying value natin is 800,000, 1 million minus 200,000. However, sinabi dyan, the appraised value daw will be 960,000. If we say appraised value, this will be the value of the equipment ng, uh, after na accumulated depreciation ng appraised value. Kasi nga, dapat wala na yung accumulated depreciation. Di ba? So basically, makukuha na po natin dyan yung ating revaluation surplus. Kasi yung ating appraised value, 960,000, then yung carrying value natin, 800,000. So, 960 minus 800, so meron tayong revaluation surplus na 160,000. So, positive, so meron tayong upward adjustment. So, sabi natin, pag upward adjustment, i-recognize -re natin yan under OCI. So, however, since proportional method po yung ginagamit natin, sabi nga natin, accumulated depreciation is not eliminated, eliminated or accumulated depreciation is retained. So, i-retain -re lang po natin yung 100,000. However, we must also consider the change in the fair value. So, sa case natin, from uh, 800 naging 160, so, ibig sabihin, may change po tayo na 160,000. So, pag chinect po natin yung ratio niyan, 160 divided by 800,000, so, meron po tayong 20% change. So, if that's the case, proportionately, the appraised value gross should also be increased by 20%. So, basically, the appraised value should be 1 million times 1.20%. So, bakit 120% yan? Kasi, uh, 1 plus 20%. So, 1 million times 1.2. So, ang bagong appraised value natin is 1.2 million. Then, i-recognize lang po natin yung bago nating accumulated depreciation will be 1.2 million minus 960. So, meron po tayong 240,000. So, tandaan or i-check nyong mabuti. So, sa case natin, tumaas yung net tumaas yung gross, then tumaas din yung accumulated depreciation. Kasi meron po tayong upward adjustment, then proportionate yung ating approach. So sa case natin, yung change natin sa gross from 1 million naging 1.2 million, so yung gross po natin naging 1.2, uh, ang change po natin dyan ay 200,000. Kasi 1.2 minus 1 million. Then accumulated depreciation, nag-increase din siya ng amount natin is 400. So, kapag chinect po natin dyan, 200 minus 40, then the net amount change natin is 160, which represents the revaluation surplus. So, ayan po yung computation yan para nakuha natin yung amount. So, basically, ang i-recognize lang po natin sa 2017, ito pong change lang. So, yung change natin, yung ating equipment, nag-increase siya ng gross 200,000. Nag-increase yung accumulated depreciation ng 40 and also nag-increase yung ating revaluation surplus ng 160 na i-recognize -re natin under OCI. So, the proposed entry should be like this, di ba? Debit tayong equipment, amount 200,000. Then, credit tayo accumulated depreciation, 40,000. So, kin-credit natin yan kasi normal balance na accumulated is credit. Since nag-increase ng 40, so therefore, credit tayo ng 40,000. The remaining amount, will be put under revaluation surplus, 160,000. At alam naman natin, ang revaluation surplus is treated as OCI. So, ayan lang po yung recording kapag nag-appraise tayo proportionately. We retain the accumulated depreciation, mag-add lang tayo kapag nagkaroon ng upward, then babawasan kapag nagkaroon ng downward revaluation. Sa case natin, dahil upward yan, so we, we just need to credit revaluation surplus and report it under OCI ang amount natin doon ay 160,000 pesos. Okay, so let's continue the discussion. So for example, on December 31, the new appraised value is 540,000. So since 2019 pa yan, so record, record muna natin yung mga nangyayari uh, after ng 2017. So pagdating natin ng 2018, so ang ito po ang entry natin, di ba? So to get the depreciation expense, simply compute the new carrying value which is 960,000 which is the fair value then divided by the remaining number of years or the remaining useful life. Sa case natin, meron na lang tayong 8 years kasi naglapse na yung 2 years. So, 960 divided by 8, so ating depreciation expense ay 120,000. So, last time, meron tayong 100 ngayon, 120 na kasi nagkaroon tayo ng upward revaluation na 
20,000 pesos. So, debitayong depreciation equipment, then accumulated depreciation credit, 120,000. However, there's still another entry required, which is the reversal of the revaluation surplus. So, yung revaluation surplus na i-reverse -re natin is yung equivalent lang po dun sa narecognize nating expense. Since ang normal nating depreciation is 100, tapos naging 120 siya, so, ibig sabihin, we have to reverse uh, 20,000 pesos ng ating revaluation surplus. So, simply debit revaluation surplus, then credit tayong retained earnings 20,000. So, kinredit natin yung retained earnings kasi ni-reverse yung revaluation surplus at ultimately, mapupunta naman po yan sa ating retained earnings kasi nga, yung depreciation expense natin na 20,000 napunta sa PNL, then yung retained earnings napunta sa 20,000, yung effect net effect lang naman yan ay zero. So, pagdating po natin ng 2019, sabi daw na new value is 540. So, before proceed that, recognize muna natin yung mga required entries, di ba? So, ganun lang din po yung entry. So, 960,000 divided by 8 years. So, debit tayo ng depreciation equipment. Then, credit accumulated depreciation equipment worth 130,000. Since another year has lapsed, therefore, we have to reverse the related revaluation surplus. Yung amount po natin is also 20,000 pesos. So, debit, revaluation surplus, 20,000, then credit, retained earnings, 20,000 pesos. So, since the value will is appraised at 540, so, gawa ulit tayo ng bagong table. So, pagdating daw natin ng 2019, so, this will be the new balances, di ba? So, yung bago nating appraised as last time, 1.2 million. Then, yung ating bagong accumulated depreciation is 420,000 kasi nga, nung last time, meron tayong 240,000 tapos nag-recognize tayo ng 120, another 120 ng 2018 tapos another 120 ng 2019. So, therefore, the total accumulated depreciation is 480,000. So, the new carrying value is for 720,000. Since meron na tayong bagong appraised value na 540, so the new appraised value will be 500. 40,000. In this case, kung mapapansin nyo, from 720 naging 540, so medyo malungkot yan. So, meron po tayo downward revaluation. So, ang downward revaluation natin ay total ay 180,000 computed as follow. So, 720 minus 540, so 180, di ba? So, dahil proportional method yung gagamitin natin, so uh, 180 divided by 720, so meron po tayong 25% decrease ng value. So, yung 1.2 million, i-times lang po natin yung sa 75% kasi nag-decrease na siya ng 25%. So, 1.2 million represents 100% minus 25%, so matitira po ay 75%. So, the new appraised value before accumulated depreciation is 1.2 million times 75% is equal to 900,000 pesos. So, 900,000 minus 540, so the new accumulated depreciation is 360,000 pesos. So, kuhain lang po natin yung change, 1.2 million minus 900. So, the change in the gross is a uh, decrease of 300,000 pesos. Yung accumulated depreciation, ganun din, magde-decrease siya ng 120,000 pesos. Yung total change po natin ay decrease ng 300 sa gross, then decrease sa accumulated na 120. So, ultimately, meron tayong total decrease na 180,000 pesos which represents the downward revaluation. So, pinag-usapan natin last time kapag may downward revaluation, i-record natin yan sa ating uh, profit and loss. However, since may na-recognize na tayong revaluation surplus, kailangan muna natin yung tanggalin. So, uh, at December 31, 2019, ang, value, ang remaining value ng ating revaluation surplus is 120,000 na lang. Kasi nag-revalue tayo last time ng 160, tapos nag-reverse tayo ng 40,000, 20,000 ng 2018, tapos 20,000 ng 2019. So, yung total reversal natin is 40,000. Then, yung unang balance natin, 160 minus the reversal of 40,000. So, the remaining balance sa ating OCI is 120,000. So, since 180 yung total uh, downward devaluation at may balance pa po tayo na 120 sa ating OCI, so, therefore, i-exhaust muna natin yung 120 na yan. So, ibig sabihin, bawasan natin yung OCI natin ng 120, and the remaining amount will be recorded under PNL using revaluation loss, which is 60,000 pesos. So, yung composition po ng ating uh, adjustment is 120 OCI and 60,000 pesos PNL, both downward revaluation.
So, the suggested journal entry should be like this, di ba? So, debit tayo ng accumulated depreciation, 120,000. So, based dun sa change sa taas, so debit tayo ulit ng revaluation surplus, which is the remaining amount ng revaluation surplus natin ng 120,000. Then, debit tayo ng revaluation loss, which is amount is 60,000. Then, credit po tayo ng equipment, which is sa change na 300,000 pesos. So, ito po yung ating example niya.